September 27, 2022 was historic in the life of both the Federal Polytechnic Ilaro and Dr. Mikhail Aremu Akine. For the institution, the date marked the appointment of the sixth rector, while it was a watershed for the new appointee who assumed the topmost office in the institution. And two years head on, as the chief administrator of the institution, Dr. Mikhail Akinde led administration thought it wise to highlight some of the remarkable achievements in the past two years. Though the celebration was low keyed, it however attracted the top management staff, council members, and representatives of Islam and Christianity communities in Ilaro. The rector, Dr. Akinde, described their achievements so far recorded as collective because of the support of all staff and students of the institution. We wouldn't have been able to do it without the staff. The staff, we have wonderful staff. They are ready to do anything. Remember yesterday night when they, at the innovation center, I saw staff see welding around 12, uh, 12 in the night. Even one, and now ask question, how many police can have this kind of opportunity? Where staff will be working in the night? So we have wonderful staff, they are committed, they are dedicated, and they can give anything to this polytechnic. And that is what we are doing to get to where we are. So I want to salute you, I don't my cap for you. And for the unions, all of them, the ASU, the NASU, the SANIP, they are wonderful people. We are partners in progress. We do not have any issue of, uh, since very peaceful, we are working together in an harmonious relationship with all the three unions. If you are there, they are super. Uh, the Sanip and the Nasu. I want to say three books are for you. Dr. Akinde paid glowing tribute to past administrations of the institution who laid good foundation upon which successful administrations are building. Let me just end this note by especially thanking the former rector for the foundation that he had laid down. You have done well for us, sir. Principal officer, the former registrar, Dr. Mrs. Ushuri, all of them. It is the foundation that they gave to us. The institution for this second anniversary of Dr. Akinde's leadership displayed three major innovations, including biometric fingerprint attendance device for staff and students' administration, electronic seat and hall allocation system to regulate students' examinations, and an improved solar-powered five-passenger tricycle, among other achievements and expansion of academic programs of the institution. And directors and all of us that are well seated, I want to appreciate God for giving us the grace to see this second anniversary. I want to tell you that when there's a team spirit, everything will work. When the rest started this one, I told God, Lord, we don't want this right now. We have some. So we give God the glory for the team spirit that we are all, that we are all exhibiting. And on that note, I want to say, in continuation of the team spirit, is the allocation of seats, um, seats um, allocation of seats in the examination. Now, the rector, because of his love for integrity and maintaining the rank of the institution to be number one, he frowned totally at cheating in the exam. We want our students to have a good credibility so that when they graduate from this institution, it will be said that and we know in our room, their students don't sit together. And that is why he has saddled us with that, of that responsibility of ensuring that we come up with a system that could look at our specific constraints. And what are those constraints? As we all know, that in the institution, we have our, our ND1, HND1 students having their exams in the morning, we have our HND2 and HND2 having their exams in the noon. All these are some of the constraints that we put into the allocation system to ensure that a student has supposed to have an exam in, the, in AM is not allocated seat at PM. So we are able to satisfy this constraint to ensure that the system works seamlessly, just like we are migrating from the manual to the automation. Also, we agree with me that there are issues of infrastructures. As the director has said, we, are, we have enormous number of students. 
And looking at the infrastructures and ground, you can see that if we are to sit all these students at a, at a seat, that would be invariably impossible. We may be lumping them up. That's why we don't want to allow that in our exam. And at the same time, we need to maximize the infrastructures that we have. So all of these constraints, as regards the use of uh, maximization of the limited infrastructures, were also put in place in the automated seat allocation system that the team, that the director has saddled with the responsibility has taken into consideration. You will agree with me as well that even if we have 5,000 staff in this institution, and if you look at what should be the ratio of student to staff, you will agree with me that we don't have enough ratio of staff to students. And because of this, my, the wisdom of our rector, to be able to manage the way the resources, I mean human resources, if we manage to achieve effectiveness in the national system, we are going to look at the constraint of having limited number of staff. And all this also were put in place in this seat allocation system. And that is why the team that worked on allocation of seat, uh, on automated seat allocation system, we brought up an algorithm. And that algorithm, we call it constraint satisfaction problem solving algorithm. We looked at all these constraints and we put the constraints into an algorithm. And that algorithm, we were able to implement making use of the Python code. That is why you may be wondering, what is Python code? Python code is just a tool that is used for developing application. We have chosen Python because Python can work both on, uh, on data and can also work on the GUI. When I mean GUI, I mean graphics user interface. And for you to know that this project is a very valuable one, that is why this team again, we pushed it to research funding and it was approved. That is telling us that by, by the grace of God, very soon is going to be uh, the, 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 the application, I mean the software, that is, that is going to be available for every one of us to view. But for now, we are running it on the Python code at the back end. And what does it do? It generates seat number for every single student, for every exam. Exam A does not clash with B. All A does not clash with all B. All of them have their allocation. And every student knows their number. And I want to all say at this point that this couldn't have been possible without the team spirit that exists between the examination committee and the seat allocation committee. As I started my work with this team spirit. So it's this team spirit that has been established by the rector that has helped us to be able to work endlessly together to ensure that we're able to come up with this constraint satisfaction problem solving algorithm implemented using Python code to ensure that our students are coming out with what they know and not what they copy or what somebody spied into their ears. Because there's no way a mathematics student will be asking questions from a biology. Definitely, they are not, there is no correlation between them. So that's all we have done. And I want to use the opportunity to also tell us that any certificate coming out from our institution is authentic, credible, reliable, and dependable. So I want to say that we are ensuring quality assurance. To capture the fingerprints into the database, you all are ready before you can start taking attendance. Your information should have been captured. And that is exactly what we have in the different schools that are used for both staff and students to capture their fingerprint features so that afterward they can be used for attendance. So after doing that, we uh, progress to be able to get further uh, funding because initially our projection is to be able to have 182 devices to cover lectures, to cover workshops, to cover laboratories, to cover the library, to cover even the hostels to be able to take attendance. One of the advantages of this particular device are numerous. One of them is to save costs, ju just as the director has said. You know, present presently we are doing an exam, and what do we do? We print a lot of attendances, wasting papers. Now with the use of this device, you have all the information uh, in soft copy or online, and so you can query it anytime, you can come there at any time to look at attendance, so print, to make informed decisions. And we were able to secure third fund fabrication funding, and we produced 75 more. So presently, we have 96 
devices operational in the institution. So how does it work? It combines the uh, functionalities of the traditional tablet that we know with the advanced features of biometric figure, uh, fingerprint scanning technology in order to take uh, attendance, to authenticate and take attendance. So we have uh, the sensors on the device. So what does it do? When you put your finger on the sensor, it's able to sense and scan your fingerprints and be able to authenticate it with whatever you have captured in the database. If it is there, then it's able to tell you that you are successful when captured. Another advantage that this offers is the fact that you can control our defaulters right from the gates or in the classrooms. So students that have not paid can be controlled either from the class or from the gates because the way the software was developed, I also forgot to tell us that the software was indigenously developed. So how does it work? We connected the API of the portal with the software. So at the point of payment, when the student has paid, then the data is populated on the device, such that when the student is capturing, that is the only time it gives authentication. That's the only time it allows you. So if you have not paid, you cannot take attendance. So that's how it can be used to control. So if you are in a class, and you are taking attendance, and you discover that a student is capturing and it's not going, it simply means that the student has not paid tuition. So that's one of the advantages that the, uh, the system offers, among so many others. Then the issue of uh, mobility is very important. One of the limitations that we got in the market is that the biometric device, you either hang them or you put them in a particular location for you to use. But we identify a peculiarity that we are in classes. If you do such a thing, it's going to cause traffic in the class. So we decided to develop, as I said, we combine the functionalities of traditional tablets with the advanced feature of biometric scanning technology. So what it does is that the way it's developed, okay, it's such that you can pass it as we are seated like this. If you want to take our attendance, I don't have to put it somewhere. I don't have to create any traffic. You pass it and they take a sender and pass it to the next person, making it mobile and making it even much more effective. So this is an innovation just I have said by director, which the committee only brought to fruition, and that this can go a long way in promoting the Federal Polytechnic in Laro and putting us on limelight of this particular innovation. We also identify uh, the limitation we have in terms of electricity. We all know that we don't have power everywhere. It's part of what the committee thought about. And so we also developed this, we designed this and developed it by ourselves to be able to charge. This is a charging door, and we have chargers also built by what we designed in the committee. So we identify clusters, we identify places where we are going to be putting, there are many, just, this is just one of them that we brought. So this charging door can take 24, we have 24 devices there at a time. So what it means is that when you pick a device, you go to class, you take attendance, you come back, just return it back to this place and plug it, it continues to charge. Another lecturer, another person can come back, pick it and go. So another of the advantage is the fact that it's not limit, a particular one is not limited to a particular course or a particular event. Anyone can perform any of the functions that you want to perform. So you can put anyone at any point in time. So that is uh, the little we I have to say about this. So everything are homegrown. And so in the uh, committee of Polytechnic, we are proud to say that Federal Polytechnic is doing fine in our webometric ranking. We are doing very okay, and we are progressing on every side. For this country to move from where we are, attention must be given to foundry. Foundry is where we cut uh, iron to precision. For example, let me leak this to you. The motor that is driving that uh, particular tricycle was designed there. But when it gets to issue of uh, cutting iron to precision, we send it over. Uh, we send our design to abroad for them to cut for us. If a jacuta is working, if we have a very good foundry here, we will not have taken it to anywhere. We, it means that that even motor can be manufactured here. So our challenge to government is that they should give attention to the polytechnic education that is dealing with applied knowledge, because we apply a theory. We want to see it working, not that uh, we 
we are talking in the classroom, not making it practical. So our, our, modo, our, our modus operandi is that we combine both theory and practice, and you are going to see it. For example, that tricycle that you are seeing was actually manufactured by three departments. Mechanical engineering, you know, we have automotive engineering, we have uh, metallurgical engineering, we also have uh, computer engineering that are doing it, they are working together. There, there is synergy between those departments, that's why they are able to produce that uh, tricycle. And we are taking it further. I do not want to tell you the future that we want to have that will really be the game changer when we get to anywhere that we are going. And the present administration was committed to God for more divine directions in the years ahead. Mercy upon this institution. Lord, show us mercy. Lord, show us mercy. May we continue to have more of your mercy in this institution. Your mercy upon our rector, your mercy upon the team, your mercy on all staff members, your mercy on all students. Lord, show us mercy. Lord, show us mercy. Lord, show us mercy. Protect our rector, protect his family members, protect all, all principal officers, all students, all staff, divine protection in Jesus' name. Seize the tide of death among us. May we have mercy. May we receive favor, even before the government, for more projects in the name of Jesus. Electricity projects, oh God, very, very soon we are believing you, it will be accomplished. And several other projects already outlined, and many others that will still come. Favor in the name of Jesus. Further protecting Kilaro is number two. We are going back to that number one. And we shall continue to experience progress. Thank you, Father, for the answer. Lord, on behalf of the entire staff members, we want to thank you for the good heart you have given to our rector and his team. We ask for more of it. We ask for protection as it travels far and wide on behalf of the institution. And even for our governing council chairman, Alaji Dela. Lord, we are praying divine protection for him and all council members too in the name of Jesus. For the protecting Kilaro, we continue to advance and your name alone shall be glorified. Thank you, Father, for the answer. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Bismillah rahman rahim Let us start by asking for forgiveness. And I say, Fakultu stagifiru rabbakum innahu kana gafara Yurisili sama alaykum midirara Can you join me please by saying Astagafurullah 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 For the purpose of being here today for our rector, for all the management and everybody we said Allazina qala lahumun nasu in nan nasa kodi jama'un lakum fakhashawum fazadahum imanahum wa qalu hasibuna allahu hasibuna allahu animali wakilu the senior staff club of the institution was not left out at celebrating Dr. Akini and the present administration. An event tagged an evening with the rector was earlier held to appreciate the robust cordial relationship between the management and all staff and students union in the institution as well as the achievement so far recorded. <laughs> 